1988 Glasgow Garden Festival. So come with me now and join a large crowd of people who've come together to sing their Harvest Festival Songs of Praise. Well, I said there was a large crowd. Are you in good voice? Yes! Splendid. Well, if you're not one of the over four million people who've come here in the last five months, then we're going to make up for it tonight in this very special Harvest Festival Songs of Praise. And this splendid display of produce, which has all been donated, straight after the programme will be distributed to local charities. We'll also be meeting the man who was sent out to buy all the plants and trees for this festival, all three million of them. You'd need some supermarket trolley for that little lot. And of course, we'll be singing. First of all, a hymn of thanksgiving. Come ye thankful people, come. is a festival of contrasts. The colours, the sounds and the smells. The old and nostalgic aspects of Glasgow lie alongside the new and futuristic ones. The high street and industry are both here. There are quiet corners and others which are a little more boisterous. Local and familiar scenes and often strange and exotic ones. The sacred and the secular. In fact, the whole Garden Festival is a celebration of life, not just in the plants and people that are everywhere, but in the very resurrection of this place, which before the festival was a derelict dockland. And personal renewal and resurrection is what John Newton was talking about in our next hymn, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken.
Walter Gilmore works for the Parks Department of Glasgow District Council. But three years ago, he was seconded to the Garden Festival as the Deputy Director of Horticulture. Three years ago, this site was a dreadful state of glor and muck. It was a derelict site where the buildings had been left in a very untidy situation. Debris line everywhere. It all had to be cleared away. And where on earth, you pardon the expression, do you get all the topsoil from? Ah, uh, that was a big problem. Uh, because in the, the, the Scottish uh, middle belt here, we have great problems of finding topsoil. And the first topsoil really wasn't suited to the site at all. Uh, we sought something else, an alternative. And an alternative was found in the dredgings of the river. The dredgings were from the hard work farmlands, you might say, that have found their way through the burns and the streams and the rivers that, that feed the Clyde. And uh, this was, you might say, harvested uh, from there and uh, brought uh, into good use again. Now, this exhibit here shows us the kind of sludge that was taken from the bottom of the Clyde. That's right. It's a nice little display from uh, Strathclyde University where they show the raw materials and then developed in each patch and how the plants have responded to that. And there's three million items in the ground here on 120 acres. And uh, it meant that all this material had to be found, tagged and uh, at the nurseries on source and then brought to the festival site, uh, taken care of on site, planted properly and uh, then uh, it was a case of looking after it from then on in. Well, Walter, this is the last weekend of the festival, so what happens to all the plants and the site now? We look upon the plants as living furniture, and that furniture will be spread throughout Scotland uh, and further, probably. What's it like for you, uh, wandering around here as you must do every day and, and seeing your creation and, and people enjoying it? Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, I think that's been the highlight of the festival, uh, to see people uh, enjoying the, the festival, enjoying themselves. Now the hymn you've chosen is being sung to the tune The Song of the Clyde, but tell me about the words. Well, I was sitting in the kirk one day, uh, my kirk is an East Kilbride, the old parish in East Kilbride, and uh, I was sitting one day and I thought, how it described Glasgow, really? But wouldn't it be nice to put it to a tune that everyone knew that bit better? And what better than, let's say, The Song of the Clyde. Curry farm sheep and cattle on Fenwick Moor in Ayrshire. For them, Harvest Festival comes at a particularly busy time of the year. Farming people say you live as if you're going to die tomorrow, and you farm as if you're going to live forever. The sheep cycle here starts around about the beginning of September, and we buy in what we reckon is our seed stock. We buy a new lambs and uh, they join the flock and they're probably here for seven or eight years. When we buy a, the sheep in, they all have a different look, they have a, a personality of their own. You can see a ewe going away running with a pair of lambs, you know, taking them, mothering them, so to speak. I mean, that sums up the whole scene in farming, you know, the, the love and the care that you have for for the ground it is just the same as what that you has for our lambs. I love this place, always have. It gives you time to think. Noise doesn't intrude into your mind. 
I do enjoy going out with Robert across the hill to gather in the sheep. And uh, the sky laps in and the sheep shout to each other. And, oh, it's lovely. At this time of the year, we are now selecting the prime lambs for, for market, which we tend to think is our harvest. We're uh, filling their backs and their tails for the correct fat to lean meat ratio. After the selection is uh, the dipping, where we submerge the, the sheep in a sheep dip to get rid of any parasites for the winter time and to waterproof their coat for the, the rains and the snow which come sometime around the middle of November. There's nothing nicer than when you go way out in the morning about half past five, a morning like this, where there's such a stillness that, that uh, you just feel that, you know, there's someone looking after you just the same as you're looking after the sheep. Really, it occurs to me there are very few harvest hymns about animals. That's right, there, there aren't, but uh, Harvest Thanksgiving wouldn't be Harvest Thanksgiving without we plough the fields and scatter. Uh, and so we don't literally plough fields and scatter on this farm. Uh, we are dependent on farms who do. festival has contributions from all walks of life, then it's equally true that the visitors to the site span a vast age range. There are things here to hold the attention of everyone. For the children, there's much to learn as well as much to do. Strathclyde Education Authority has encouraged all of the children in this area to come along to the festival, and each has their favourite bit. I like the magic chorus. I like the knees, the tram, the tower, music garden, fun, 
the tower and the bouncy castle. Can you tell me what you think about the whole festival? Oh, it's really good and it's well worth coming to. And even the BBC has got its own festival garden and television studio. And waiting for us inside now are some youngsters from the Glasgow Youth Choir. And they're going to sing a song all about a well-known biblical character from the book of Genesis. Barnes is the organiser of the Staffordshire Garden. The display is an example of the ancient art of well dressing, a tradition native to both Staffordshire and Derbyshire. Well dressing as it's carried out in Staffordshire is a, very much a community event. There's a special church service at the church on the Sunday and there's a procession through the village to the well and the well dressing panels are then blessed and a small service held around the well. The Father Almighty attending the use of these our waters and rest of In Staffordshire, most of the villages that carry out well dressing are really giving thanksgiving for their water supplies. It's a funny thing, but water supply, pure water supply, is often taken for granted, particularly I think in this country. When you hear what's happening in Africa with the drought and in Bangladesh with the floods and the problems these bring for pure water supply, I think it puts in focus just how lucky we are to have pure water. Today we have Long the Village here with us and they're creating a special well dressing panel just for tonight's Harvest Festival programme. Theresa Riley is the organiser of this particular event today. Well, first of all we decide the design that we're going to do and then it's put onto a, a big piece of cloth. And then it's presented onto the clay base. And then it's traced through. The cloth is taken off the clay and then it is what we call Wooled up, we join all the lines so we 
natural effect, make this pattern back onto the clay base. And then it's all filled in with dried leaves or petals, pieces of wood. In fact, it's like a collage with flowers and dried leaves. Well, there's nothing dry about them now, Joe. It's all that singing about Noah that must have done it. How long did this beautiful collage take to do? Well, it took um, three or four people two days, really, from start to finish. Now, all the colours and textures, what kind of things are in it? Well, natural materials are used. A lot of flower petals, uh, things like lichens, mosses, even rice, in fact. Um, the blue of the sky is hydrangea petals. The yellow of the lettering is chrysanthemum petals. Down here in the stream, as well as the actual rainwater, you've got honesty petals. Uh, lichen on the bridge here. And the, the scales of fir cones here to um, show the, the bank and the bracken. It's beautiful. And the seed it depicts? Yes, this is Three Shires Head. Uh, it's a famous beauty spot in, in the Longner area. It is, in fact, on the boundaries of the three counties, Staffordshire, Cheshire uh, and Derbyshire. Sure, thank you all very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Well, now we continue with the theme of foliage as being a symbol of recreation. Now the green blade rises. Twenty miles south of Aberdeen lies the Arbuthnot estate. This land has been the family home for some 800 years. In the centre of the land lies the parish church, dating from pre-Reformation times. The family still manages the estate, but for Lord Arbuthnot, the developments and methods of managing land have meant a re-examination of the meaning of harvest. To me, conservation means the best or better management of land to achieve a wholeness. That's why I like a mixture of farming and woodland and wildlife management. Has your great involvement in land management uh, changed the way that you look at Harvest Festival? Yes. If you look around now, you'll find that a lot of the land where there has been a cereal crop has been harvested and next year's crop is already in the ground. You can see it growing. So that the clear distinction between seed time at one end of the year and harvest at the other end of the year is now blurred. And I think of, in fact, the autumn, not just of harvest time, but of a new seed time. And so you're looking into the future for next year's harvest as much, even more than perhaps, you're looking at the present. And that needs vision, doesn't it? Yes. There have been two guidelines in my life. One has been the text which was given to me at my confirmation, which came from Galatians 6, verses 6, 14. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the next thing is the vision that that should give you. Uh, we do need to be visionary for the future. And as Christians, our vision should be Christ himself.
So be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, has been something that has always meant a great deal to me as well, as a hymn and as a meaning for life. Our prayer and blessing are led by the Chairman of the Interchurch Garden Committee, the Reverend Robin McHaffey. The church is in the Garden Festival to provide a centre of worship. Beyond that, it, it performs the role of letting the nation see that there's a vibrant church in Scotland. We designed the church on a biblical theme. From the back of the garden, we take the waters of creation, the water that flowed from the Garden of Eden, and follow it round as a, a creation theme into desert, out into the more concrete 20th century, and then back through to the waters of the kingdom. The millstone in there is the communion table, it's the font, it's, it's the whole centre of God's grace, rising up from the middle of the building in, in terms of the vision of Ezekiel, who saw water flowing from the sanctuary out into the world for the healing of the nations. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, hear our thanksgiving for this garden festival and the gift to our city of creativity, of flower, of fun and friendship. For our hopes for tomorrow, may your gift of renewal born here bring fresh joy. Lord of the harvest, bless our hopes. These gifts and your people here and at home. And now may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit go with you all. Amen.
Next week's Songs of Praise come from the Whitney Feast at the usual time, 6.40.